Hey guys, welcome to this animation tutorial for Procreate. By the end of this video, you guys should have a good understanding of how to recreate this simple bouncing ball animation. And uh, this is one of the very first animations I've actually done in Procreate. So it goes to show how easy it really is. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here I have a little guide that I created. And each of these little notches is one frame of the ball. So there's a few things I want you to notice here. The first thing is that the ball is going to be going in this arc shape. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of doing just straight lines and it looks very unnatural that way. The next thing you'll notice is that as gravity starts to take over the ball, as it gets lower and lower to the ground, uh, the frames are going to be spread apart further, which makes it look like the ball is going faster. And then pretty much the opposite is happening when it goes up because it's rebounding off of the ground really fast. So you're going to get these more spread apart lines, making the ball seem like it's going faster. And then it's going to kind of hang in the air for a little bit. And then it's going to repeat and repeat. And each time the arc is going to get smaller and smaller. In order to create animation in Procreate, all you have to do is go up here to the wrench icon. And then you're going to go to canvas and you're going to turn on animation assist. And you'll see this little bar pop up at the bottom. And now basically, if you look at your layer stack, every single layer is going to act as a frame. So if I create a few frames here, you'll see each of these layers is going to show up down here. And this will make more sense as we continue. So I'm going to go ahead and create a layer on top of everything. And you'll notice now that my guide has disappeared. So in order to keep that on top of everything the whole time, you're going to want to put that on the very top layer which is the very rightmost frame down here. And you're gonna click on it and toggle on foreground. And now that's gonna stay locked in place. And just keep that at the very top here in the layer stack. So underneath of that, we have a blank layer. And I'm going to go ahead and just select a regular ink brush. So I'm just gonna draw a ball and then hold down the stylus and that's gonna snap it to a smoother shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and press one finger onto the canvas and that's going to turn it into a perfect circle. And then I'll go ahead and select transform tool and I can kind of move that around in place to line that up with the first notch there. Let's go maybe a little bit smaller. That's good. And now what I like to do is do the keyframes first. And in this instance, the keyframes would be the very tops of these arcs and the very bottoms of the arcs. And just so that the ball maintains the same shape throughout, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. Now you can hand draw these if you want, but I'm just doing this for the sake of speed and consistency. So with our first frame being on bottom, we're going to grab the next frame, which is the one above that. And I'm going to go ahead and move it down to the bottom here. And you'll notice that that first frame disappeared and you probably want to see that as a reference. And to do that, we can go to settings here and turn up onion skin frames. Right now it's set to none. So if we just set that up to like nine, you'll see it will show the other frames around it, uh, but there'll be lighter opacity. And you can change the opacity here as well. And this is also where you're gonna access the speed of the animation later on. But I'll show you that later. Now, one important thing to do is when the ball hits the ground, it's actually gonna squash. Um, and this is going to give the ball some character and make it not just feel like it's a marble or something. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and do freeform transform. And I'm just going to squash it quite a bit and line that up with the ground. And now we want the next frame, which is going to be up here. So I'm just going to grab this perfect shape ball I have from that first frame, duplicate it, and move that up to the very top. And now I can just move that over here so it's the exact same size and shape. And then I'm gonna grab the squish frame, move that to the very top, and bring that over here. And then we need the next top of the arc. So I'm going to grab that perfect shape again, bring it up to the top. And now since there's less velocity to the ball on each of these small little 
arcs, I'm not going to squish it as much each time it hits the ground. It's going to basically get less and less squished. And I'm just repeating this process. And if you click down here too, you can kind of go between the frames and you'll see each one highlighting. And then just finishing up here really quick. And now if this is too distracting for you to see this many and you just want to see like the one or two next to the main one you have selected, just go to settings and you can change onion skin frames here down to a lesser number. So here are three. So we're only seeing three steps behind step that you're on. And almost done. Okay, so now we can hit play and see what we've got. So we've got the very start of this bouncing ball and it's a little fast right now. So you can just go to settings and lower frames per second. And that's looking pretty good so far. Now the next most important frame after these is gonna be the one right before it hits the ground. And the reason for that is instead of being squashed, it's gonna be stretched because it's moving so fast and because gravity is affecting it so much. So I'll show you what I mean here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this very first frame, this one here, and I'm gonna duplicate it. And now for this frame, I'm gonna put it right there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out a little bit vertically. And I'm going to do that for each of the frames here before it hits the ground. And each time just like the ground hits, it's going to stretch a little less and less each time. And by the end here, you don't even really need any stretch at all. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Pretty cool. 
And now the final step is going to be to go ahead and fill in the rest of these frames. And the important thing here is that you're not going to want to stretch the ball too much um, on these frames that where it's closer to the top or else the ball is going to feel really mushy. So you really only want to stretch it when it's really close to the bottom here. So probably this frame after it bounces against the ground, I'll stretch it out and then maybe a tiny bit after that. But all these up here on the tops of the arcs are going to be pretty much perfect circles. So I'll start from the beginning, the first frame here, and I'm going to duplicate this and move it to the next step. And I'm going to continue this process. And here I'll probably just want a tiny bit of stretch to it. Not a lot. And then we continue. And I'll probably start from this top one here and work my way backwards. So I'll duplicate that one and grab the one before and kind of work my way back here. And again, here's the one where I'll probably want some stretch to it because it's shooting up off the ground. And actually I'll probably adjust this one here to have a little bit of stretch to it. Now I'm going to grab this top one again and work my way forward. And apply a little more stretch to this one as gravity takes over. And let's just take a pause and see what we have so far. So that's looking good so far. It looks like it speeds up here at the end, but it really doesn't. Once we fill in these frames, it'll all have a con consistent uh, motion to it. And we can just increase the FPS to see it played at a faster speed. So let's fill in the rest of these frames here. I'm now going to start from this top here and work my way backwards. Duplicate that and I'll select the one beneath it. Now this one I'll want to have a little bit of stretch again. Not too much. And I'll go back to the top, work my way forward. Start here, go backwards. and work my way forwards. I'm 
going to start with this top one here. Work my way back. And at this point, it gets a little tricky because you're kind of running out of room, but at this point, it's pretty much just a rolling ball. Kind of fill in an extra frame here. So it hits the bottom. Here's the top one, so I have to fill in left and right of this here. Actually, that one I already have, so I'll delete that. Let's just see what we're working with here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Now I'm going to go to settings and increase the frames per second, maybe up to 24. So that's looking pretty cool. And at this point, what I can do is hit pause, go back to the beginning. Actually, I'm going to go to settings and turn onion, screen, onion skin frames to none. So we're only seeing one frame at a time. And now I'm going to go to the top and turn off my reference layer. And what I'll do now is I'm going to fill in the ball with a solid color on each of these frames. So to do that, you're just going to go to the frame you want to fill in. And then you're just going to drag the color swatch right into the center of the shape. As long as it's a closed shape, it will fill it in. I'm going to do that for every frame here. Okay, now that that's done, I do have a ground layer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that all the way to the top. And I'm going to remove the previous one I had up here and bring that all the way to the bottom. And now on this ground layer, again, if you just Click on the last frame here and click foreground. It's going to lock it into place. And now if we hit play, we'll be able to see our finished animation. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.